The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, June 27th, 2023, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com, by, or you can email Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Jim Bianco. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim answers the question, is inflation bottoming in June? Jim, we're all anxious to hear the latest on inflation. To start us off, what is the base effect and what does it tell us about headline inflation? So if we go to the first chart, remember that when we talk about inflation, we refer to inflation as year over year change in inflation. So every month when we get an inflation number and we will get the June number this in July, we will get the June number because we're ending this month right now. We will be dropping off the number from June of 2022. That's the red bar on the chart. For the month of June of 2022, inflation was 1.2%, one of the highest monthly numbers ever. You will remember it like I do. We had $120 crude oil and the price of gasoline nationally went over $5. And we were all obsessing about the price of gas. And that's all we were talking about. And that's why it was reflected in that monstrous inflation number. Now, if you look at the last couple of bars on this chart, you'll see 0.4 in February, 0.1 in March, 0.4 in April, 0.1 in May. And of course, it's basically 0.4, and I'll talk about that in a second, but except for the months that oil went down. Most likely the estimates are that June will be another 0.4 month. So you'll take the 1.2 and you'll drop that and you'll add a 0.4. So that'll bring down the year over year number. Now, before I go to the year over year chart, I'll point out, look at July. A year ago, because the price of crude oil collapsed in July, a year ago was zero. Well, that's going to be easy to beat in July of this year. And then that means the year over year number will go up. Then in August, it'll be 0.2. That is an easy number to beat. 0.4, 0.5 in September, October, that might be a little bit tougher, but the 0.2, 0.1 in November and December, those might be easy to beat. So if we go to the next chart, this is just explaining the base effect. The blue line is the year-over-year change of inflation. It peaked in June of last year with that 1.2% number at 9%. It is now at 4%. If you drop that 1.2 number in June and you replace it with a 0.4, you'll be at 3% in inflation year-over-year. But then if you look at the scenarios, the red line assumes that we continue with the average of inflation at point since COVID, since 2020, the average monthly inflation number was 0.4. So what if we continue to print 0.4? We bottom in June and we're back above 5% by December, actually near five and a half. If we print numbers that are more consistent with 2009 to 2019, meaning that the monthly inflation numbers are 0.15, then we bottom in June and we're near 380 in December. And then the extreme scenario, which hasn't really ever happened, or hasn't happened in about 70 years, what if we print zero every month, which we're not printing anyway, but just to get, we're still above 2% at the end of the year, even if we print zero, we'd be at 2.8, 2.9% at the end of the year. But in the, other than the case of that zero number, all the numbers on the base effects bottom in June and they start drifting higher. And how about core inflation? So let's take a look at core. And this is the next chart. Here's the monthly number for core. Now, the base effect isn't as pronounced in core. You know, we're going to drop a 0.6. And then you got a 0.3, a 0.6, a 0.6. So there really isn't as much a base effect. But I do want to point out something else about this chart. Look at December through May. 0.4, 0.4, 0.5, 0.4, 0.4. The numbers for inflation are pretty consistent on a core level, core is 85% of inflation. The other 15% is food and energy. And we're printing 0.4s and 1.5. That is about a 5% rate. So if you look at the next chart, same thing, this is the year of the last chart here, it's year over year, the blue line is the year over year change 
in core inflation. It's at 5.3. It's a little higher, of course, than the 4% headline because the price of crude oil and gasoline is down a lot, and that's why it's lower. But what you see with this is if we persist to continue to print those 0.4s, we're bottom around September because there isn't as much a base effect, and we're still above five at the end of the year. If we print a numbers like 0.2s, 0.1s, that was more consistent with the 2009 to 19 era, which is the orange line, we're still above four. And even if we print zeros for the rest of the way, and we don't really do that, still that's the green line, we're still above three. Now, again, that green line is an, is an extreme in the other direction that I don't think is likely. I actually think the most likely scenario is the red line because that means what has happened over the last several months continues to happen over the next several months. So what this pretends is that the drop in inflation is about done, especially at the headline level, and it'll start up. That's the base effect. Now, what I'm not assuming here is we don't have a shortage or an embargo or a big downturn in the economy, or OPEC starts pumping like crazy, or resurgence of the Ukraine war, or any other kind, or a trade war with China or something. Any exogenous shock could change these words, could send a trade war and embargo, could send the price inflation much higher. If we were to get OPEC to open the spigots or a severe downturn, that could send the inflation rate lower. So. Assuming no shock, we're looking at the inflation rate potentially bottoming as, um, in the next 30 days on headline inflation and by September on core inflation. How will the Fed react to this? In a simple terms, not well. They will look at this and they will find these inflation rates unacceptable. And they will say that this justifies their outlook that they need to raise rates two more times, if not more. Now, what's important to remember about what the Fed is the Fed has talked about what is the neutral funds rate? Where do we have to get the, excuse me, not neutral funds rate, neutral interest rate, which also includes the funds rate. Where do we have to get interest rates in order to be neutral? They've defined that as the entire yield curve. That means every interest rate from the Fed funds rate to the three-month bill to the 30-year bond being at least half a percent above the inflation rate. They like to focus on core. Well, if the core inflation rate, because of the base effect, bottoms by September and is somewhere, let's, let's conservatively say between four and a half and five, then that means that every interest rate has to be between five and five and a half. Well, the funds rate's already there. The three month bill is already there. But the two years not quite there. It's at 470. The 10 year note's not quite there. It's at 370. So there's much higher interest rates in store if this is what happens. And the Fed will be looking to raise rates to drag all those rates up to 5%. And only then would they say that's neutral. And they'd have to be there for an extended period of time before they could then say, that they've done enough work with inflation. So yes, the inflation rate was 9% a year ago. Yes, we are going to see the inflation rate maybe come down to 3% this June. But unless you make the case to me that there's an exogenous event coming in the next 90 days, and look, there might be, you just never can predict them. But without it, you're probably looking at a bottoming of inflation now, meaning in the next 30-ish days in headline, by September and core, and those numbers drift higher, and the Fed, Jay Powell, is going to look at this and say hike, and hike again. Maybe they might not even be done with two hikes if it, you know, gets all the way out over 5% by the end of the year. So, yeah, we've been very comfortable with the inflation reports. They have been coming down, but now all of the tailwind that has been pushing inflation down is behind us. And now we've got headwinds and we could see the inflation rate start to move higher. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Bianco Research, Arbor Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks again and have a great day.